we'd be looking closer down here, look, to this God here, this Jehovah. Yeah. But even with this, they're saying it's the one true God. It's the one true God of the Jewish religion. OK, this isn't the one true God. This isn't the source. This isn't the one of everything. This is what the Jews regard as the one true God. So, right. if we go here, we've got, and Terah took his son Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, yeah. and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees so, to go the into Chaldean. the land of Canaan, and they came to Haran and dwelt there. So, first off, if they were going to Canaan, why did they stop in Haran and live there? That's a question yeah, for a long time answering. as well, wasn't it? It was many years as well, wasn't it? Well, it, it was, was until yeah. it was until Terah died. Because look, well, if you yeah. look here, and and the days of Terah were two hundred and fifty uh, five years, and Terah died in Haran, and then immediately after, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, "Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, from thy brothers, from and from thy father's house." unto a land and i will show thee and this is there i'll make right. you a great nation blah 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 can so can this dive in a second as well because um i don't want to stop your flow on this now but i want people watching this to note <laughs> that the word lord is in uppercase yes so this is going to be really important later all right so we're carrying yes. with abraham for now but we've got to get back to where the lord is suddenly in uppercase yeah we'll come back to that god moment. lower case has disappeared but anyway keep, yeah. keep, keep, keep going yes Sorry. So, so Abraham, sorry, I didn't mean to jump in. Yeah. So basically, what we've got, and what I've written on my blog as well, because the backstory to this as well is 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 massive. Um, you know, what you've got to understand here is is that Abraham and Nahor took wives, and the name of Abraham's wife was Sarai. So was, who's Nahor again? Nahor was um, Abraham. Oh, sorry. A, it was he is portrayed as Abraham's brother and grandfather. So there's two Nahors. Yeah, that's a bit weird, okay. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's a Nahor one and there's a Nahor two. Right. Now, as part of my writing and as part of my research, I've got Nahor as a, as a version of L. Um, well, it's actually the version of God. Yeah, well, he's a version. He's 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 an avatar of El, yeah. Um, not as the Elohim, but as actually El, the individual God. And when you when you realise that Sarai, <clears throat> her name means princess. Okay, so the Hebrew of Sarai means princess, and the Hebrew name for Milka means queen. And I have Milka as. Um, as Rhea, you know, from the old Titans. And she gave birth to Zeus, didn't she, Rhea? Well, Milka gives, yeah, Milka gives birth to Bethuel. Well, Bethuel is Zeus in the Bible. And Bethuel gave birth to Laban. And Laban is Hephaestus um, because Zeus gave birth to Laban. So anyway, that that's part of a, a bigger backstory. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be first to anyway. I think because it's the, the uh, connection just, with the Greek. Pattern just to give maybe. people a little bit of a, a little At bit of a so, carrot. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you've got this Abraham and Nahor as brothers in this particular verse. They're meant to be brothers. Okay. Um, what I'm suggesting is is that um, Nahor is basically was L before he ceded power to Inanna, because as part of the old Mesopotamian religion... Sorry, one second. Sorry, before he ceded power to who? Um, Inanna. You know, the, um, the um, goddess... Uh, the the um, god goddess of heaven. So she was... It's well known in the, in the Mesopotamian myths that El was the leader of the gods, the pantheons, wasn't he? Yes. Unt until he ceded power eventually to Inanna right um who was it's, it's another one i think possibly for future videos we need to get back into 
the two creations at the beginning of Genesis, don't we? It's really hard to even get out of the first book of Genesis, isn't it? But we'll come back to that. I'm again, yeah, it, it, this is the thing. It all it goes from one thing to another. The God hands um, over, basically, in Genesis. You can see it, can't you? That's another one. We'll yeah, come totally. Back to. Yes, yeah. We'll, don't do so, that now. We'll take, that's a whole video, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, getting, getting back to this Sarai and yes. Milka. So we've got, I believe, the two daughters there because you've got Princess Sarai and you've got Queen Milka. So if Abraham was the eldest brother, okay, with the birthrights, why was he marrying the princess and not the queen? Because the queen must be his mother or something? No, but the queen, I mean, Milka is down... Is set Milka's to be made the... Nehar, isn't it? Oh, I see. This is where we've got two Nehos. Okay, so what? Yes. The younger, I'm with you now. So I was being a bit dim then. So the younger brother gets to marry the queen, whereas Moses has to marry the princess. Abraham has to marry the princess. The yeah. Sorry? Yeah. So Abraham is marrying the princess yeah. and Nehar. So if Abraham was the oldest brother, he should be marrying the queen, Milka. But he doesn't. Nehor's marrying the queen or married to the queen for whatever reasons. But there are two Nehors. So what I'm getting at is that basically Abraham had to follow his father, okay? Because that's what happened until your father died, wasn't it? You followed in the footsteps of your father. So wherever your father went, until he died, you had to follow him. Oh, so right, that's you what couldn't Ab just leave home in those days, as it were. No, you were part of that tribe. You well, know, you were waiting. Birthright, I suppose. Yeah, you you'd lose, you'd, you'd lose your birthright and everything. So you were because Tara was, and bearing in mind, according to um, the old Jewish myths, Tara was the minister of Nimrod. Okay, so that's giving that's giving you some perspective of what's mm. going on here. That Tara was the minister of for Nimrod. Yeah, so I think who Wilson of Blackie put Nimrod as relating to one of the Babylonian emperors. I think wasn't it. Okay. It doesn't really matter now. We've gone, yes. So yes. we've got him as as, as we do an minister. Imperial, we're doing an imperial level, that's what I'm saying. We're doing we're yeah. an emperor. Yeah, massively so. So I mean Abraham and Terah, they're always portrayed as these uh, I don't know, like shepherds and Yeah, yeah, just wandering yeah, around with little these sticks. nomads wandering around in tents, but they are we're, we're talking about the Jewish elite. You know, we're talking about the royalty. So if they were going around in great big mobile caravans, then they, they must have been huge. I mean, majorly, you know, like the old Indian caravans that go on for miles and miles and miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got this verse here where after Haran died, um, now bearing in mind, this is around the period where um, Babylon was sacked as well um, by the Hittites. So we're talking about a time that Haran could have been involved in all of this fighting as well. And that's the reason why he's died. And that this Abraham and Nahar are then taken as, um, what's the word that I'm looking for now? Um, basically, they're, they're not serfs, but they are captives of marriage. So let me just... A hostage mean... sort of situation, perhaps. Almost, yeah, because it's a similar kind of thing for when Jacob was held by um, Laban. You know, they, they portray it as he went to visit his uncle and he, he had a nice little time and then his uncle did him over. But he was actually a captive and it's quite obvious that he was a captive. Um, it's, but interestingly... It's, many people. it's only obvious now you've said it, yeah, because you wouldn't spend seven to 14 years... 20, 20 years. Just dinner guests, would you? Or 20 it was 20, years, altogether, yeah. it was yeah, yeah, 20 so. years altogether, so... And, and just and to back up my, what I'm saying about um, Abraham and Nahar being as captives, so Sar Sarai and Milka coming in and basically capti captivating them. So Sarai is H is Hebrew eight two nine seven, and it means princess, as I said, but it comes from a Hebrew word eight six sorry eight two six nine. And that Hebrew word, 8629, it means sar, and it means vassal. Okay? It means vassal, noble official, or chieftain, or ruler. That's what Sarai is. Not Abraham. <laughs> so Sarai is coming in, and her name means leader, chieftain, vassal, or noble. So she's married Abraham. 
and then you have Milka, which means queen. So that's got to be Inanna, the queen of heaven, Milka. Why else is she called the queen? Okay, which makes perfect sense if Nahar then becomes El, where El has basically lost his kingdom. So he started off as Abraham's grandfather, lost his kingdom, and has basically handed over his kingship to Milka, which is why he and Abraham have married into this line. You see, so there's Milka, a lot of in the stories where two stories kind of get conflated yeah, yeah. into one, don't we? Like, you know, two Arthurs and whatever, lots of examples of it. Yeah. And this is still Hebrew. So all of this is still <laughs> Hebrew related. So Abraham, Abraham at this time is a Hebrew. Okay. Nahor is a Hebrew. Milcar is a Hebrew. So if Milcar is a Titan as well, because she's Rhea, that means that the Titans were the Hebrews. And to some extent, Milcar's children, i.e. Bethuel, who was Zeus, was part of the 12 Olympians as well. So they would have been Hebrews to begin with. So the changing from Hebrew to Israelite so the changing from the Hebrew old gods to the Israelite new gods occurs as soon as Terah dies. Because at this point, Abraham is following Terah, but Terah is following Nahar. Okay, because Terah is Nahar's son. Well, Nahar won anyway. Oh, yeah, it definitely looks like it's two Terahs, doesn't it? Because like you said, one's a son and one, one's marrying the grandson or something. Yeah, or so grand, we've got granddaughter. Abraham <laughs> following Terah and Terah following Nahar. And they followed them to Haran, where they dwelt. Why would they do that if they were going to Canaan? So you, obviously Nahar is still the dad of Nay, sorry, it's still the dad of Terah, and Terah is still the dad of Abraham. That's why they've had to stop in Haran, because that is where Nahor went with Milka. Yeah? So if Nahor went to Milka, that meant that Terah had to follow his father, which is why they dwelt there until, until. <coughs> Terah died. <coughs> so until Terah passes on, yeah. Until terror passes on, and then in immediately, in the next breath, I mean, and then immediately after terror dies, Abraham is told, get away, get thee out of thy country, and from thy brothers, the family, yeah, from the Hebrews, because at this point you're still a Hebrew, yeah, get out of thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I'll make thee a great nation. Well, this is the Israelites the great nation, isn't it? Because his son, Isaac, was the father of Jacob, and Jacob was Israel. So we're talking about his great grandchild here as the great nation. And then he's are basically we implying saying- then, Sorry to jump in again, but are we implying then that um, not all Hebrews became Israelites? And there's no. a whole load of Hebrews that went off and- Yes. Right, okay. That right. came to Wales. Sound a penny dropping. So that's where yeah. the Hebrews came from. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, yes. That, that and it, not necessarily the Okay, carry on. Go on. And <laughs> this is this loads is, of repercussions, but go on anyway. Yeah, we have to Yeah, well, this is why yeah. the Israelites don't like the Hebrews. <clears throat> you know, this is why the, the, the why I'm saying the Hebrews are actually going to be um the heathen nations you know they're going to be the ones that are classed as um the not, not the chosen ones because the chosen ones are the israelites okay we know that don't we we know that the chosen ones are the israelites so we know that abraham was a hebrew before he was ordered by the lord now bear in mind that lord isn't the god this is jehovah this isn't el yeah, because it's not okay. uh, capital G, small O, small D. You now we're looking at the no. Lord, capital. So now, which is so the legal fiction and all that stuff we'll get onto another time. Yes. So and the Lord is actually saying here, look, and I will make thee a great nation. 
Okay, so he's he's actually saying that this is going to be a separate nation. A new nation, yes, yes. A new nation. So if he was a Hebrew now, he's not a Hebrew there. He can't be because he's been told to get out of thy country. Well, thy country was Hebrew, wasn't it? Yes, yes. And so was the, yeah. The, and his, his brothers as well, yeah, his kindred. And his yeah. brothers were all Hebrew, yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Haran was probably part of the Mitanni, you know, and, and the Mitanni were linked to the Hittites. So we know that the Hittites were part of... Um, not um they were part of the hamites wasn't they the, the, the descendants of ham they weren't the descendants of japheth through, through um from oh, sorry, through Noah's shem. Offspring, yeah, yeah. Uh, through shem which mm -hmm. is abraham you know abraham's lot was through shem wasn't it well we know that the um son. yeah so we know that all of the all of the the sons from so we're going through from shem all the way down to um Abraham and Terah and bearing in mind as well interestingly Nahor's father was Serug okay well Serug in Hebrew means um to branch or to break away and that's what we're seeing in Haran uh, not in Haran that's what we see in Nahor isn't it we see this breaking away from the Hebrew nations into the Israelites and that is actually shown in the meaning of um, Sarag's name. Because like I said, his name means to break away or to branch away. So he had Nahor and Nahor's branched. Yeah, through Tara and Ad, um, Abraham, his grandchild and obviously his son. So does that make sense to you? What I'm saying there? And do those It's a little verses... bit complicated that bit. I, I think I'm trying to get to the point where I, I've got the bit where you can see we've got this uh, larger group, the Hebrews, which is sort of a, an ethnic group, really, mm. with a, a, a multiple gods, perhaps, <clears throat> yeah. all these different gods. Polythe polytheistic religion. Yeah, yeah, a pantheon, which you're saying then is also this kind of analogy where you have some of the historical characters are portrayed as the pantheon, the Greek pantheon. Yeah. The Greek pantheon is derived. And as the their, Titans, yeah. Showing their story and the Titans and all this. Mm -hmm. Then away from all this, then the Lord, whoever that is, we come on to, uh, mm -hmm. has taken Abraham, and who's clearly a very senior member of royalty. He's come from Ur. He's marrying a queen or a princess, and his brother named his exalted father Abraham. Right there we are, and he's told the Lord says you're the founder of a nation. They've actually broken away from these Hebrews. Yep. And this is this is now the Israelites that the Bible's following, and this is yes. monotheistic, yeah. Yes, this is this is the beginning of it. <laughs> you got it, bang on there, mate. Well Try my best, yeah. It's a complicated yeah. story, which is good. So this is the very, very beginning of it. So bearing in mind this this period of time, we're looking at if the if the dates are correct, we're looking at around sixteen hundred BC. Okay, sixteen hundred to fourteen hundred BC, circle that sort of period. So we're talking about a time which is way, way before the Israelites actually came to prominence. Um, you know, because you, you could probably say the Israelites came to prominence where sixth century, fifth century, um, where I'm they just started. Mention to... like seven twenty, where they get taken off into captivity. I mean, maybe yeah. a little bit earlier, but yeah, not around about then, isn't it? Yeah. So but, but the got, key thing yeah. here is that it's. Um, what will be interested on in how you could possibly work it out is is how numerous the Israelites were at this point. There wouldn't have been that many. I wouldn't have thought. It's hard to get, well, isn't it? What do they mean by Abraham's family? It's not just his immediate children and wife. He's clearly some sort of king, isn't he? You'd have like a tribe or... Well, he's known as a great prince, isn't he? When he goes to bury his wife, Sarah, and he speaks to Ephron, um, uh, the son of Zohar, yeah, that's he wants the to get the land, isn't it? Is that the part you're on yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he buys the land, doesn't he? And when he goes to meet the Hittites, Ephron... I believe. Yeah, the sons of Heth. Um, and when he goes to meet them, they actually turn around to him and say you know you you are um, a mighty prince among our people and that is obviously because he married the princess sarai so from a from a pantheon of the old um say the old olympians or the old um titans who, who do you think sarai could be you know she was obviously a very uh, you know i mean was it was this was this aphrodite or the equivalent of aphrodite you know, it's like, who was she? Because um, she was obviously, and and it, and if um, and if we've linked 
with sorry, if I've linked Milka with Rhea and she's the mother, then you've only got to look for the daughters of Rhea. You know, and this is Sarah's probably Isis. I would hazard a guess. Uh, quite possibly, because another thing then, which is the stuff I've got to get out, is the Sir Wilson of Blackett writing on a similar theme, but not 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 spotting quite the things you spotted. But there came a slightly different angle there. We got the, the sort of astronomical side of this as well. That, and again, mm. this isn't to say Venus and stuff. Yeah, yeah, there wasn't just a, an on Earth act. It's not saying the, the, the activity on this did not happen. Mm. It, it's it's saying that you you can make an analogy with with the planets because obviously the names make sense. So Venus and Saturn, they're all the same names of the planets are the gods. So it's they're, they're, and the the story of what was happening with the planets and that could have fed into this story as well. That's what gets uh, mm. and another it's another separate area. What, what we're looking at here with your work is actually the, the sort of the, what the legal document says about the historical people and where they went, isn't it? This is the yeah, and I think that's... I don't quite get the, how it ties in with the Greek pantheon is the, the tricky bit. I'm trying to get my head around. Yeah, well, to do that, I mean that's a that's a separate. Um, yeah, okay. video on its own where you, we, we would need to go into Strong's concordance and actually look at the um, definitions of the words um, and then you can actually link them up with the gods and the meanings of the gods um, because what I mean if you, I mean even if you read some of the old literature I mean what was it I read um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Raphael Hollingshed and his um, his chronicles you know, if you go in yeah. to read um, the stuff that he was writing about, um, I've, t I've just totally lost the flow of what I was talking about now. Well, no, we're trying to make, make a link somehow uh, some, uh, between the difference between the historical mundane, if you like, on people Earth, with the link with the pantheon and how the gods interact, don't they? It's the, we're trying to see then if we could tie that to the Greek Pantheon that's a right. Video. Yeah. There's a separate video. That, the that's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and as I was saying about um, Raphael Hollingshed, what he does is he actually goes in and identifies um, like Mizraim as being Zeus, um, so and Osiris as well. So he has um, Osiris and Zeus as the same characters, and what he basically has is Zeus basically travelling from Egypt and founding the Mycenaean. Um, civilizations and then became known as Zeus but it was actually Osiris or, or, or Ms. Raim that he was actually functioning under and this is the thing there's what I'm coming across is there's lots and lots and lots of characters that are involved but when you actually nail it down there might only be half a dozen of them and they're oh, all really? okay. they're all playing the same thing and this is this is doable, really, when you think about it. If they were androgynous entities, well, then one person is automatically playing two characters, at least. So you've got their male avatar and their female avatar, you're saying? Yeah. That, or two aspects. I think aspects is probably a better word than avatar. Yeah, or godheads, isn't it? So it's it's a bit like Janus, isn't it? Janus was portrayed as a two-headed yeah, god. Head was looking, yeah, looking forward to the past and looking to the back. Um and that's always been a theme, especially in Egypt as well. Egypt was very big on their and andronogous um, beings, weren't they? Um, but anyway, so I've covered that. So let's get out of this now and go back to okay. my original thing. <laughs> and let's have a look uh, back to here. So getting back to here again, we've already explained that God H430 is the LOM. And that is um, from an, uh, an, an etymology of H433, which is the LOR. And the LOR takes us into this god, H410, Hebrew 410, which is L. And again, I, th I think I've already mentioned he's, he's known as Saturn, isn't he? Um, yeah, well, I think we'll draw that a bit clearer when we do the comparison with the pantheons, I think. So, that's another subject in itself, how each of these relate to the planets and the gods. And yeah. The, yeah. So we have this L, um, mm -hmm. and this comes from another word. So it's, it's been shortened from this H3532. Um, if I bring that up. We come to this RAM aspect. Yes, of being we do. L. <laughs> And again, this is, um, we see all these symbology of the horns, 
um, in the old religion. And we obviously see as part of this definition here, which is well, sacrificing lambs is obviously a big thing, isn't it? And uh, yeah, and, and not just that as well, but I mean, God, all sorts, it's a very important animal. Yeah, you've got L, so L's coming from this ram definition, it's, it's you know, he's root, so L is rooted in this um, ram aspect, but interestingly, L is also defined as this look false gods, demons, and imaginations which is where we get the horns of Baphomet. And if you notice, number one, the god is a lowercase there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Particularly in the usage, it follows a full stop, so they really make sure that it's a lowercase. Yeah, and and this is what I mean. It's there in your face. They're they're telling you that what this god reflects. So this isn't the the almighty god, isn't it? This this isn't... um, you know, this isn't the the supreme deity because if it was, be capital G for a start, wouldn't it? We'd yeah. be looking closer down here. Look to this God here, this Jehovah. Yeah. But even with this, they're saying it's the one true God. It's the one true God of the Jewish religion. Okay, this isn't the one true God. This isn't the source. This isn't the one of everything. This is what the Jews regard as the one true God. But this Jehovah... The weather god with Jehovah, wasn't it? it was the yeah, this, this is Yaldabaoth. Hmm. You know, this, is, this is El working on his own and not as part of the Elohim. Okay, so El is Jehovah, who is Yaldabaoth, but he's only works as El when he's leading his angels or his demons or his imaginations, yeah? His angels, look. This is where the angels come from, mate. The host. There's only one thing that made angels in all of the all, all of the Gnostic literature, and that was Yaldabaoth. Okay? Yaldabaoth. And they were demons. They were chimeras. They were half-breeds. They were, you know, if you look at the zodiac, what's the zodiac? All, all of the things on the zodiac, you know, they're chimera animals. They're 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 half-breeds. And this is why. When you look on um, Christian churches, there's one on top of Land of Cathedral. There's a cockerel, yeah? Yes. On top of the cathedrals or on top of the churches. Yes, yes. Well, as part of the Gnostic literature, Yaldabaoth or Jehovah or El, one of his symbols is the cockerel. Mm, mm. You know, he's at the, the Gnostic symbol for Yaldabaoth. If you go and Google it and, and look on Wikipedia, mm-hmm. his official symbol is like a chimera so he's got a torso of a man he's got a cockerel head and he's got a twin serpent lower half yes yes <laughs> yes i think we got one of those in architecture power book yeah you, you probably got, got one there. touches on this yeah, yeah. that's yaldabaoth okay yeah. and that is god from genesis chapter one yeah yeah that's l and that is jehovah Whatever time now, but yes, there's, there's, there's pictures in there talking about these chimeras and stuff. Yeah, they did a few different um, combinations as well, wasn't it? This is uh... well, here again is a good example of Abraham. Yeah, on, yeah, carry on with that. Yes, following you, we were just speaking about different pantheons and the polytheistic and the um, the monotheistic and how Abraham. I think if I were left... you on, you could probably hear my chickens going crazy. Like you can hear them. <laughs> well, <laughs> Abraham, the he left his. He left his God, didn't he? He left his house. He was told to get out of his house. And look, here we've got at the moment, look. And he blessed him and said, he blessed, blessed be Abraham of the most high God. So this is, look, this is Abraham is actually worshipping El at this point. Yeah. It's the, the verse says it. And he blessed him and said, blessed be Abraham of the most high God. <laughs> well, the most high God was El. It's not the same one, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is not Jehovah. Abraham became, sorry, Abraham became Abraham to follow Jehovah, the Lord. But whilst he was still a Hebrew, Abraham, he was following El. Look, it says it. El was his most high God. So while Abraham was a Hebrew, he was following El. And look what El is. The lamb, yeah. The ram. The lamb. <clears throat> what did Abraham sacrifice 
to the Lord in place of Isaac. Yeah, it's always a sheep, isn't it? Yeah, or a lamb. It was a ram. So Abraham was symbolically sacrificing who? El. He was sacrificing El as the ram. So you think it may be that when he says he's got to give up his son? Yeah. And he, he, he said, gave up so El instead. He gave up his God. He gave up his God El, the Hebrew God El. And that's what it was because he was going to sacrifice Isaac. Yeah, so to I the Lord, it was, wasn't he? Yeah, but it was an angel of the who was it? It wasn't an angel of God. It was an angel of the Lord that stopped Abraham from sacrificing Isaac. So do you know why he was sacrificing his son in the first place? Then, um, because it was to show his allegiance to the Lord. So why would an angel of the Lord convince him to change sides? Then this is the. I suppose well, we're just... thinking about that story, and that's going to hold different messages once you start looking at it from a different angle. Yeah, well, he was going in there. I think he was going in there to sacrifice um, his son to show his allegiance to the Lord. And the angel of the Lord come forward and was like, no, 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 no. Don't, don't sacrifice your son. No, no, no. We need him. Yeah, he's like, yeah, to don't do that. Like, because from, Isaac's yeah. going to be producing Jacob and Jacob's Israel. <laughs> so you can't sacrifice him. So... <laughs> that's what why he's doing? like yeah what are you doing yeah, it's like no so that's why this angel of the lord stepped in and abraham was like all right then i'll look around and then he found in the bushes this ram yeah, just that was caught in, there, in the yes. thickets wasn't it that was caught in the bushes and what i'm saying is basically mm -hmm. that's symbolic of abraham saying well actually i'm sacrificing l my god to follow yahweh Ye jehovah singularly not to follow El and his his um, Hebrew gods, yeah? Yes. The leader yeah. of the Hebrew gods, which is what he was at that time, the most high God. And again, again, remember, he was called the most high God because he was the pole star in the, con in the constellation of Draco. That's why he's the most high God, because mm. he's the highest star. And, the, and he was called Draco which is Latin for dragon, mm -hmm. which is why El is known as that old dragon, Satan. And that's why there was a battle in the heavens because El's son overthrew him. Yeah, and that's why there was a battle amongst all of the angels in the heavens because God, El, fought against the, well, God, the beast, the dragon, fought against the lord and was cast down to the earth yeah he was disposed of he was deposed so hang on a second are we seeing in the garden of eden story as well the snake is actually god there yeah, that's l that that's l that's the actual god it's the one who's like <laughs> condemned and pushed out that's yeah that's the, the, yeah that's, that's the, the god. god he's he, he's coming in and doing doing stuff behind his son's back mm -hmm. and that's why his son is oh, going sorry, no, sorry. no 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 yeah. the, the snake is l that's what you're saying, isn't it? One of the symbols of El, yeah. It's yeah, yeah, one but, of his but, but, symbols. Okay. But he is, that's the high God. Yeah, that's the oh, high God. Yeah, yeah. So you've got his son, the Lord yeah, as God. As the Lord God, which is his yeah. son. The Lord God creating his little creation. And then you've got his dad button in going you know, to his creations, which is why he's despised. And it's why he's cursed. You know, you're cursed, you are. You, you can go on your belly for the rest of your days. You know, he's basically the Lord God. Yeah, how, can is basically the Lord God cursing. how can the Lord God curse the high God? Because it's the Elohim. They're a bunch of gods. They're angels, aren't they? It's not just one God. Right. It's not just one aspect of it. What you've got is different aspects, different Godheads. You know, and it all goes back, sorry, it all goes back to one prime parent, which is the Gnostic element. And the Kabbalah element. And you really do have to understand the Kabbalah and the Gnostic element to understand how all of these gods and all of the like El and Jehovah and Yahweh, they're all avatars basically of these higher heavens. Excellent. Yeah, these higher right, gods. Was, and this is where the, the, time, yeah. and that's where the verse comes, that's where um, Ephesians comes in 612, where it says, you know, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. 
they're fighting against spiritual yeah, wickedness. spiritual level yeah yeah it's spiritual wickedness in high places um, and that's why the Lord God, I think, is referred to somewhere in the Bible as the Lord of the forces. Um, or the Lord of hosts. Is that the one? Yeah, it's the Lord of hosts or Lord of forces. Let me just look on my thing here now. So I'll be able to pull up the... Um... So Daniel 11, 11, 38. I was going to say this. What, how this is the God of forces, one, this is. I was just mentioning right. there with Daniel the God 11. of forces. Daniel 11, yeah. Right, go on. Um, and it talks about the God of forces uh 11 to 30 11 37 11 38 you know you shall be in honor of the god of forces well who is this god of forces why is this god of forces in the bible you know if it's not god then who is it why are they talking about it so as you can see we're really starting to get into the meat of the subject now and from this there's a couple of clues we'll end up looking at how the pantheon of the greek gods was formed possibly from the hebrews how this ties in with the migrations, who the Hebrews and Israelites are, what God we're talking about. And this is not an attack on religion, Christianity, Judaism, anything like that. It's trying to dig down and find actually what is in there that we should be aware of. Like I said, feel free to join the channel, help out any way you can. We have um, a wide variety of historical subjects covered, uh, which all ties into British history and the migrations. You can see we do site visits, look at the various things going on, ancient megalithic walls, languages. So join the discussion on Facebook, join the group, become a Patreon supporter, and please comment. I want you to keep it polite, interested to hear different views. So, more to come. Till the next time, Hedwig. <laughs>